right, welcome back for some more discussion about utility theory and how to predict how someone would maximize their utility given two choices, a budget and some prices. In the last video, we used budget lines and this interesting looking total utility table to solve several utility maximization problems giving this person different amounts of income and different prices. And while the Berkey method of doing this with budget lines in a utility table is very convenient and very interesting, we need to do this the way textbooks want us to be able to do it as well. We're going to get the same answers, but we're going to see a couple of additional insights that we don't get to see when we do it this easy way. Using method number two here, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the marginal utility per dollar of each good. Now, the first thing we have to do is calculate the marginal utility of each additional pretzel and each additional beer separately. So that's what we're going to do in this table down here. Let's tackle the beer first. So what we want to do is just pick a column here if we're looking at beer and say let's pick the column here when we have zero pretzels. I've made this table so that it doesn't matter. You could pick any column. And what we want to do is start here. When we have no beer, we have no utility from beer. And then when we drink the first beer, that gives us 30 utility. After drinking the second beer, we have 50 total utility from drinking beer. So what we want to do is find the marginal, which means the additional or the change in the utility as we consume more beer, or as this hypothetical person consumes more beer. So quantity one, what's the MU, the marginal utility of the first beer? Well, since that takes us from no utility up to 30 happiness, the additional utility is the change from zero to 30, gives us 30 additional happiness. Now when we go from 1 to 2, we go from 30 happiness to 50 happiness. So how much additional happiness is that? Right, 20. So let's fill it in the table. And we go along doing the same thing. The third beer gives us an additional 50 to 65 is 15. The fourth beer gives us an additional 10, taking us from 65 to 75. The fifth gives us an additional five, and then the sixth gives us an additional one happiness, going from 80 to 81. So let's put that down here in this block. Now let's do the exact same thing for pretzels. Let's just pick any row, because the row is where we're consuming more pretzels. Let's pick the bottom row here. So we start off with no happiness. We eat one pretzel, that takes us to 20 happiness. The additional utility is 20. But then the second pretzel takes us from 20 to 35. The additional happiness is, right, 15. And then the marginal utility for the third pretzel must be 10 because it takes us up to 45. So 10, then 45 to 50 is an additional 5. 50 to 51 is an additional 1. And how much additional happiness does the sixth pretzel give this person? zero. So now we know how much additional happiness each beer and each pretzel gives us. That's the first thing we need to understand before we start trying to maximize this person's utility, but now we need to take into account how expensive each of these things are. So it's not just how happy something makes you that's important, it's how expensive it is. A brand new car might make me extremely happy, it might give me 10,000 additional happiness but the price is very expensive. Whereas a bottle of water, it might only give me 20 in additional happiness, but it's gonna be very cheap. So we have to take into account how much additional happiness you get per dollar you have to spend. That's the key to maximizing happiness. It's not how much additional happiness, but it's how much additional happiness per dollar you get. So we call that marginal utility per dollar. The word per means divide. So what we want to do for each of these scenarios down here, again, we've already solved them using the budget line approach. We want to do it the textbook way and see that we come up with the same results. And we'll also learn some additional things along the way. 
what we need to do here is make another column here. Here's the marginal utility per dollar for beer when the price of beer is two dollars. So that's what we have here in scenario one. Price of beer is two dollars. So since per means divide, we just take the marginal utility, 30. Since that 30 is going to cost us two dollars, how much per dollar 30 divided by 2 is 15. Additional happiness per dollar we have to shell out to get it. Think about this as bang for your buck. How much additional happiness you get per buck you have to shell out to get it. And the bigger the bang for the buck, the happier you're going to be. So really what we're doing here is we're just dividing all these marginal utilities by the $2 price tag in this scenario. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. 15 divided by 2 is 7.5, 10 divided by 2 is 5, 5 divided by 2, 2.5, and, and 1 divided by 2 is 0.5, or a half. And we need to do the same thing for pretzels over here. So what's the marginal utility per dollar for the pretzels when the price of pretzels are $2 as well? We're going to divide all these by 2. So we get 10 happiness per dollar spent, 7.5 happiness per dollar, 5 per dollar, 2.5 per dollar, 1 half per dollar, and 0 divided by 2 is 0. So here's the process. If you have some money and you need to spend it, the textbook process says start by spending your money on the thing that gives you the highest bang for your buck, the highest additional happiness per dollar spent. And then let's see what happens as we do this. So here's one way to think about doing this. We have $10. We're just going to keep track of spending our money and see how much money we have left. So what should we buy first? We have $10 in our pocket and Kind of the algorithm here is just to buy the thing that has the highest additional happiness per dollar. Is it the first beer that gives us 15 happiness per dollar? Or is it the first pretzel that gives us 10 happiness per dollar? Of course, it's the beer. So what we're going to do is we can highlight that, saying we've bought the first beer. It's going to cost us $2, and we're going to have $8 left over okay now what should we buy next we could buy the second beer which will give us 10 happiness per dollar we have to spend on it we could buy the first pretzel that would give us 10 also well if we could afford it let's buy both and we can they're going to be two dollars each we have eight dollars left so let's buy both so let's go ahead and buy the second beer and the first pretzel and that's going to cost us four dollars and now we have four dollars left now what should we buy next is it the third beer giving us seven and a half utils per dollar or the second pretzel well they're equal well let's buy both of them if we can afford it and we can because they're two dollars a piece right now in this first scenario and we have four dollars left so now we're done spending money and we bought that and we bought that and we're out of money let's see is it the same thing that we predicted before using the budget line method two pretzels and three beers two pretzels and three beers yes and a total utility of a hundred all right well let's double check it it has to be that but what if we didn't have this table up top to verify right that two pretzels and three beers gives us a hundred happiness how would we do that with this kind of table what we want to do is add up how much additional utility each of these things we're buying gives us so three beers is 30 plus 20 plus 15 that's 65 happiness plus 20 plus 15 is 35 happiness for these two pretzels. 65 and 35 utils does leave us with total utility of 100. So we got the same prediction, the same result that we did using the other method. But there's this extra couple of insights here. Insight number one, how did we do it? Well, 
we looked around and we kept spending money on things that were giving us the highest amount of happiness per dollar it was costing us to get them, right? We didn't go out and buy the Porsche or the Maserati or the Ferrari. They would give us a lot of happiness. But when you divide that amount of happiness by the price tag, you're not getting a lot of extra happiness per dollar spent. We'd rather buy something a little more ordinary, maybe a hamburger, something like that. Not going to make us as happy as a Maserati or a Ferrari, but doesn't cost as much either, right? So high happiness per dollar spent. So that's the first realization. The second one is we get this rule, this result, that if we always do that, look what's happening in the table as we go. Because we're always spending money on the thing that has the highest marginal utility per dollar, it's the first beer, and then it's the first pretzel and the second beer, and then it's the second pretzel and the third beer. What we're doing is we're forcing these marginal utility per dollars to always be pretty close to equal when we're done spending our money, right? So here, when we're done spending our money, they are equal, seven and a half additional happiness per dollar. So this is what we call the equal marginal utility per dollar rule. So when we have spent all of our money, the marginal utility per dollar will be equal or almost equal. Textbook usually says it's going to be exactly equal. As we'll see in a couple of these examples, they won't be perfectly equal, but they'll always be pretty darn close. Why is this rule important? Why is this realization important? The idea is... What would happen if we weren't maximizing our utility? What if we were doing something wrong? Let's look at another way we could spend this $10. Suppose we didn't buy any pretzels and we just bought five beers, right? Suppose we did that instead. We, we spent that extra $4 on two more beers instead of buying any pretzels at all. Look at the marginal utility per dollar of beer. It's very low, two and a half. The marginal utility per dollar for pretzels that we could have bought are higher. That's important because it's telling us that we're misallocating our resources. We took a couple of bucks here and we're getting five happiness for those $2, two and a half each. We could have taken those $2 and spent them on a pretzel where we could have gotten 20 happiness instead of five, which is 10 per dollar. So it's saying that by using our resources in a different way, we could get a higher utility. And let's verify that real quickly. Here, if we spend all $10 on beers, our total utility would be adding up all these numbers here. 30 plus 20 plus 15 plus 10 plus five, that's going to be 80 we would only get 80 happiness instead of getting the 100 that we were getting here by doing it right. And yes, this is a bit theoretical, but it does help us understand human behavior some, and it's important that we can be able to do this kind of process and understand why we're doing it. All right, let's talk about scenario two. So we're going back to our solution for scenario one, where we had three beers and two pretzels, because in scenario two, the only difference is they're giving us two more dollars. We're keeping the prices the same, but they're giving us two more dollars. What would happen here if somebody gave us two more dollars? Well, we would have two more dollars to spend when we got down to this point when we were out of money before, right? Instead of being out of money, we'd still have $2 left. And with that $2, we can pick. Should we spend that money on the next pretzel, where we'll get five happiness per dollar, or on the next beer, where we'll get five happiness per dollar? Well, we don't care. Either one would make us just as happy because we're going to get five happiness per dollar for the two dollars, which is a total of ten additional happiness. So we don't care which one we would spend it on. So our predictions here would be either we could spend that money here on the next beer, and we'd end up with four beers and two pretzels, or, but not both, 
or we could spend it over here on this third pretzel. And then we'd end up with three pretzels and three beers. And of course, this is the same prediction we came up with using the budget line method, and that's going to give us an extra 10 happiness, no matter whether we buy the beer or the pretzel. But of course, we can't afford both. Okay, we see the same prediction again. Of course, it has to work out that we're maximizing our utility. Either way, we do it. Using the Berkey method with the budget lines, picking the highest number, or calculating the marginal utility per dollar. Okay, now let's have a look at scenario three. Scenario three says, let's go back to having $10 as our budget. The price of beer is still $2. The price of pretzels is $1. Okay, here we need to calculate a new column. The price of beer is $2, so that means that we can still use this marginal utility per dollar column when the price of beer is two. But since the pretzels is only a dollar now, we have to take the marginal utility per pretzel, and instead of dividing it by two like we did over here, we need to divide it by one. So we can cross that off. And hey, you know what? Instead of calculating a new column where we divide by one, Dividing by one doesn't do anything. We could just call this the marginal utility per dollar when the price of pretzels is one dollar, right? Marginal utility per dollar. It's not going to change it. Okay, let's go and spend our ten dollars that we have in scenario three. So let me write our ten dollars over here. Okay, so we're starting with ten dollars. What should we buy first? Should it be a pretzel, where we're going to get 20 additional happiness per dollar, since the pretzels are cheaper now. Or should it be the beer, where we're going to get 15 happiness per dollar? We should buy the pretzel, of course. Okay, so let's highlight that one. And we're going to buy the pretzel. We're going to get 20 happiness per dollar, and we're going to spend $1 on that pretzel. Okay, so now we have $9 left. Let's go on to what should we buy next? Well, we could either buy a pretzel for 15 happiness per dollar or the first beer for 15 happiness per dollar. And if we can afford both, why not buy both? Okay, let's buy both. So we can buy the pretzel. We can buy the beer. And how much is it going to cost us to buy one $2 beer and one $1 pretzel? Three bucks. So now we have $6 left. What should we buy next? The third pretzel, which will give us 10 happiness per dollar, or the second beer? And the same story. Buy both if we can afford it, and we can. So let's buy both. We'll have $3 left when we're done. Let's go ahead and buy that third pretzel and that second beer. All right, what should we buy next? Well, we should buy... The beer, for seven and a half happiness instead of the pretzel, it'll only give us five happiness per dollar spent, right? Seven and a half. Let's buy the beer. It's going to cost us two dollars. We have a dollar left. And how should we spend that last dollar? Well, we could buy beer and get five happiness per dollar, or pretzel and get five happiness per dollar, but we can't afford the beer. So I guess we're going to have to go with the pretzel, because that's all we can afford. All right. Now we're out of money. So what did we end up buying here? Four pretzels and three beers. And that is the same as our prediction that we got when we were using the budget lines. Nothing shocking that that worked out the same way. But here, by doing it with the marginal utility per dollar, we get some different insights. Again, the idea that... It's kind of smarter to allocate your money where you're getting a lot of happiness compared to the amount of money you're spending for it. And second, we get this equal marginal utility per dollar rule, where in this case it didn't work out exactly, although you see that we're not even on the marginal utility per dollar for the last thing we bought, beer being seven and a half and pretzels being five, that's just because we ran out of money. If we had a little bit more money, 
and we could afford a little bit of beer, then those two numbers would be equal. So that's why I say the two are going to be equal or very close to equal if we're doing it the right way, if we are maximizing utility. So there are a lot of questions you're going to see on homework questions and tests, trying to make sure you understand this equal marginal utility per dollar rule. The idea being that if you see a case where the amount of marginal utility per dollar you're getting for one good is a lot more than that for another good, it means that you might want to rearrange your spending to allocate more money toward the thing where you're getting higher additional utility per dollar and a little bit less money towards things where you're getting less additional happiness per dollar spent. All right, let's look at the next scenario here. Scenario four, we still have $10 to spend. The price of beer is two and the price of pretzels are zero, free. How are we going to do this? This brings up kind of a difficult mathematical scenario because what I'm asking you to do here is calculate if the price of a pretzel is zero dollars, how much marginal utility per dollar are you getting? Here what we'd be asking you to do is take the 20 additional happiness for the first pretzel. Let me erase this pink. Take the 20 additional happiness per pretzel and divide it by zero. So what is 20 divided by zero? undefined is the answer we want you to give us. Let me help you think about what that undefined actually means though. Here, let's think about instead of that price being actually zero, let's think about the price being something very small. Suppose the pretzels were only one cent instead of being free. How much additional happiness per dollar would we get if we replaced the zero with the fact that they're a penny? Maybe it's not really free. At least you have to expend some effort to reach over and pick up a pretzel, right? Nothing's really totally free. Now, if we take that 20 and divide it by one cent or 0.01, we're getting 2,000 additional happiness per dollar. Huge bang for the buck. Huge amount of happiness per dollar you have to spend on it. And similarly, this 15 divided by 0.01 would be 1,500, and here we would have 1,000 additional happiness per dollar. 500, 100, and again, zero. Now, if we compare these two columns, the red one where the price of beer is $2, and this purple one over here where, well, we're assuming that pretzels are close to free, where should you spend your money? Well, this is telling us we should spend our money we're not really spending anything, but it gives you the idea that, well, if pretzels are free, we should eat our fill of pretzels first, or at least plan on doing that, and because we're getting so much happiness per dollar spent compared to the happiness we're getting for beer that we know we should get five pretzels. And then over here, spend all our money on beer until we're just out of money, I guess, right? So our prediction here would be, Keep eating pretzels as long as they're increasing your happiness. And okay, that looks like that would be the first five pretzels. And then you have $10, beer or $2, buy five beers, okay? So that would be our practical solution for this case when pretzels are free. And again, that's the same thing we came up with by thinking about this a different way before. Okay, to make sure we understand this process of calculating the marginal utility per dollar and maximizing someone's utility, let's do a little bit more complicated example here to make sure that you get it. So as always, I encourage you to download this at the link I've provided in the description. All right, let's suppose somebody named David has $71 and the price of A is $9, B is $3, C is $2, and D is $6. And here we have a table with the marginal utilities of good A for the first through the eighth unit and good B, good C, good D. And then we have a fifth option here. This person doesn't have to spend their money. They might save some of their money. So this is the marginal utility of saving the first dollar, second dollar, third dollar, 
all the way to the eighth dollar marginal utility. So what we want to do is the same process we just did. We want to calculate the marginal utility per dollar for each unit of each good and then we want to spend the $71 until we're done, always picking the thing that has the highest additional utility per dollar, or marginal utility per dollar. So let's get started here. I'm going to calculate a few of these. Just make sure you see how it's done. Please pause the video and finish filling out the table, and then I'll show you what I have. So since the price of good A is $9, we're going to divide each of these marginal utility values here by 9. So 72 divided by 9 is 8. This is marginal utility per dollar. 54 divided by 9 is 6. 5, 4, 3, 2. This looks like it's going to be 1.67. It's 15 divided by 9, and 12 divided by 9, 1.33. Now, for good B, good B is right here, and the price of B is $3. So we're going to take each of these, divide them by $3. So 24 divided by 3 is 8, 15 divided by 3 is 5, 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 3, 7 divided by 3 is 2.33. 5 divided by 3 is 1.67, 2 thirds is 0.67, and 1 over 3 is 0.33. Alright, so I'm going to pause the video and finish filling out this table. You do the same, and I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so here is the marginal utility per dollar filled out for each of these goods. I label these to make sure that we're not confused about what we're looking at here. Now, the one thing you might have a question about is what about the saving here? How do we calculate the marginal utility per dollar for these marginal utilities for saving? Well, the only question to ask yourself is how much does it cost to save a dollar? Well, in terms of your budget, what you're doing is you're removing the $1 from your budget that you could be using for other things. And so the price of each dollar saved is a dollar that comes out of your budget. And so what we're doing here is we're dividing each of these marginal utilities by one, which doesn't really change them. So why bother making another column? All right, so what we're doing here is we're saying David has $71, and we're going to start spending money, and we're going to pick the things that give David the highest additional utility per dollar. So let me grab my yellow highlighter here. And so what we're looking at here is which things give David the highest additional utility per dollar. Is it the first A, which is 8 per dollar, the first B, which is 8, the first C, which is 7.5 per dollar, the first D, which is 6, or saving the first dollar, which would give you 5 happiness per dollar. Well, it's going to be the first A and the first B, so how much is that going to cost us to buy? Well, it's going to be $9 for the first A, it's going to be $3 for the first B, or a total of $12. So we've spent $12.00. Out of our 71, how much money do we have left? $59. Okay, what would we buy next? Well, we go through and we see 6 happiness per dollar for the second A and 5 for the second B, 7.5 for the first C, 6 for the first D, or 5 for saving. Looks like it's going to be buying one of good C. We're going to get seven and a half happiness per dollar. It's going to cost us two dollars. And so we're going to end up with fifty-seven dollars. What should we pick next? Well, next it looks like we're looking at the sixes here, right? So the first D, the second C, and the second A. How much will it cost us to buy all of those things? 
Well, 9 for the A plus 2 for the C plus 6 for the D. So 9 plus 2 plus 6, $17. So we're going to have $40 left after we spend that $17. What do we spend our money on next? Well, the highest things give us 5 marginal utility per dollar. And that's an A, a B, a D, and saving a dollar. So let's go highlight all those things. We're going to save a buck, buy a D, buy a B, buy an A. Let's make sure we can afford all that. How much does all that cost? 9 plus 3 plus 6 plus 1. $19. All right, so 40 minus 19 is going to leave us with $21 left to spend. What should we buy next? Well, it looks like there are a bunch of things that give us four additional happiness per dollar here. So, saving, a D, a C, a B, and an A. Let's make sure we can afford all of that, though. It's going to cost us 9 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6 dollars plus a dollar. And sure enough, that's all the money we have left. It's going to cost 21, so now we have no money. Let's recap what we've done here. We've spent all of our money. We were always picking the things that give us the highest additional happiness per dollar. And when we're done, we see this equal marginal utility per dollar rule, which says for the very last amount of money we spend on each good, we have to be getting the same marginal utility per dollar. And this example works out perfectly. Four marginal utility per dollar for each good, and we've maximized our happiness. Well, what are we buying? Let's summarize here. Well, we're going to be buying 4A, we're going to be buying 3Bs, 3Cs, 3Ds, and we're going to save $2. How much total utility are we going to be getting? We're assuming we're maximizing it, but how much is it? How are we going to calculate that? In order to do that, we're going to want to add up not the marginal utilities per dollar, but the marginal utilities of these four A's we're getting, and these three B's, and these three C's, and these three D's, and these two dollars that we're saving. Let's add all those up and see what we get. So when we add all that up, we get a total utility of 392 utils, just happy points here. And we're assuming that's the most this person could get out of $71, right? Now, what's a different way this person could spend their money that would not be maximizing their utility? Well, they could, say, spend all their money on A. Now, yes, they couldn't quite afford all eight units, right? Because eight times nine would actually be $72, Instead of 71, oh, let's just assume that they could. If we add up the utility of all of these eight marginal utils to get a total utility for buying 8A, they would only end up with about 279 happy points instead of 392, okay? So this is about as complicated of an example as you would probably see. Now, one other thing I want to practice, and then we'll end this video, is we want to make sure that you can very easily go back and forth between thinking about total utility and marginal or additional utility. So suppose you had this table here with total utility and marginal utility, but there were some blanks in it, and you had, kind of had to figure out how to fill in these blanks. Here we have, if you haven't consumed anything, you get no utility. Marginal utility is going to be not applicable because marginal means additional or change in, and you can't have a change in anything if you're just getting started at zero. But when we consume the first unit of some good, we get 25 utility. So the additional happiness the first one gave is 25. Makes sense. 
Here, suppose we don't know how much total utility or total happiness we have when we've consumed two. So this is for both of them together. But we do know that the second one increased our utility by 20. If the second one increased our utility by 20, how much total utility must we have gotten? 25 plus 20 is 45. So marginal means if we subtract the 45 from the 25, we get the additional amount. If we add in the additional amount, 25 plus 20, we must get the total. Now here we know that the third one takes us up to 58. The additional utility, 45 up to 58, is how much? 13. How much additional utility for the fourth? Taking us up to 67 is 9. Now here, we don't know what the total is, but we do know that the fifth added 5 to our utility. So what's the total utility for all 5? Well, here we must add in that 5. 67 plus 5, 72. And what must be the marginal utility if the sixth one gets us up to 73 happiness? Must have been 1. Okay? So make sure to practice this a little bit more, but if you understand how this table works and you understand how to use the little algorithm, calculate the marginal utility per dollar, spend your budget on the things that give you the highest marginal utility per dollar until you're out of money, and you understand the equal marginal utility per dollar rule, you should be pretty good on this but you're still going to have to practice, practice, practice until you're really going to understand it. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. This is Dr. Berkey signing out. Please join me for the next video.